Another device we've added in Reason version 4 is the RPG-8 monophonic arpeggiator. I've got a Thor patch up here now, and if I play this patch, you can hear it's just a simple bass sound. If I were to play a chord, I've got my chord that gets triggered. I'm going to create an RPG-8 here, and what happens automatically, if I flip the rack around, you can see that it already connects the RPG-8 where it needs to go to in Thor so that things work. If you've never used an arpeggiator, essentially what an arpeggiator does is it takes the notes that you input on the keyboard and cycles through them in a preset pattern. The RPG-8 has a number of patterns to choose from. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to play some chords on the keyboard and trigger the RPG-8. I'm going to turn on the hold button on the left hand side here. And what hold is going to do is when I play a chord on the MIDI keyboard, it's going to hang on and remember those notes and start cycling through the pattern. So as you can see here, the notes are being triggered, and right now they're going in an up pattern. I can change the mode. We have up and down. It's just down. Random, which randomly selects from the notes that I've given it. And then manual. And what manual does is it allows me to actually decide how I play the keyboard, how the pattern is going to be played. So if I, for example, play the low note, then the third note, then the second, and then the fourth, it's going to play the pattern exactly in that way. Just next to that, we have the octave selector. And this allows me to select how many ranges or spans of octave the RPG-8 is going to cover. Right now, it's set to 1. We'll take up to 2, 3, and 4. Let's keep it at 1 for now. To the right of that is the insert section. Here's how insert works. Off, it's not going to be functioning. When we go to low, see what it's doing is it's taking the lowest note that I played on the keyboard and starting there first, and then from that point, playing the other notes that I've given it. High works exactly in the reverse. It takes the highest note that I've given it and goes down. And 3-1 and 4-2 are different variations on patterns as well. So we'll keep it on 4-2 for now. To the right of that is our pattern section. And what the pattern section allows me to do is when I enable it here, we have 16 steps to choose from. And what I can do is decide that at step one and maybe step three and five, I want it to trigger the arpeggio, but then some of the other steps are going to be removed. So you just do that by clicking on these buttons here. So as you can see, I've just created this pattern, and now it's taking the notes that I've inputted, and only when those buttons are lit up is it going to play one of the notes that are being triggered by the arpeggiator. Just like with every other pattern device that's in Reason 4, you can also hit the shuffle button and get a shuffle feel on that pattern. So to the left of the shuffle button, we have the rate, gate length, and note repeat. Rate is going to be how fast the arpeggiator is going to be going. Right now we have it set up to sync, which means it's locked to MIDI tempo. We can go up to 128th notes or down as low as just single notes, single at one every bar. I'm going to bring it up to 16th again. If we take it out of the sync mode and put it in the free mode, now it's no longer sync to MIDI clock, but it's on a freewheeling or free running rate. And I can go pretty high on this go up to 250 hertz. And as you can hear, a completely different sound that's happening. Let's go back to sync. Gate length is going to be how long the notes that are being triggered are held. So if I get it really short or take it to the left, you can hear the very short staccato notes. All the way up is going to make them tie. And then we have single note repeat. What single note repeat does for you is if I have single note repeat off and I play the keyboard, it will not trigger the arpeggiator unless I actually play chords. If I turn it on, then when I hit single notes on the keyboard, as you can hear, it's repeating. This device can do much more than just arpeggios. If you think about this device and using it in other ways, because it does have control voltage outputs, it could actually be a way to modify or change sound as well.